Hi, my name is Tel Koenderink and I'm the founder and master trainer of Novelo, where we help schools, teachers and parents create a place for gifted and talented children. And what I want to talk to you about today is policy. Because as soon as you do more with gifted and talented kids, you probably need some kind of a policy within your school. And one of the things that I think is important is to know which questions to ask. Because to be honest, I don't think there is a standard answer. I don't think we can create a standard model and say, you as a school do this and everything's going to be fine. Because schools are different. Every school has its own identity, its own group of teachers, its own background and history and possibility. So it's impossible to create one standard answer for everybody. It's how can you create the best gifted and talented program based on your own identity. And in that context, I think it's most important to know which questions to ask and how to answer them. So what's the first question? Because this is a series of nine questions I'm going to ask you. The first question you need to answer is what is your goal? Roughly, there are two major goals, and I've got actually a separate movie about goals as well, with the six goals more detailed, but roughly the, the question is, do I do it from a caring perspective? Because I, I re I'm really bugged with you know, all these gifted kids who are depressed and are not feeling well and having trouble in life. Or are you doing it from an excellent standpoint? These gifted kids have the potential to really get great high marks and really you know, up our average. Those are roughly two goals. Which area do we want to do? Do we want to do both? But that makes a big difference in who you let in because if you're striving for excellence, you probably are going to weed out all the problematic gifted kids. If you say, we're going to do this caring bit, then you're risking lowering your average actually. Because sometimes these gifted kids, because they get stuck, they don't get great grades. They might be really happy and really productive in the end, but they don't get good grades. So what goal are you after? Then the question is, how are you going to find them? But before you can find them, the question is, who do I want to find? You know, refer to the other movie I've got about talent and IQ and stuff like that. Um, are you looking for high IQ kids? Or are you looking for kids that are done with their schoolwork fast? Uh, Branzuli made the difference between the schoolhouse gifted and the creative producing gifted. Which one are you looking for? The one who does great on tests and gets great marks? or the one who's really creative and comes up with really original ideas. First, you have to determine which of the two you're trying to find, and then you need to find the right tool to, cut to find them with. What are you going to do with the core curriculum? Because this is probably a legal obligation in most countries, that this amount of subject matter needs to be brought across. But, you know, he's gifted, he needs to get A pluses on everything, or is a B fine too, or even a C? Hmm, what are we trying to do? Because would you define a student who gets only B's but then starts up, you know, the next Google? Would that be a success or a failure for your school? Or a student who gets an A plus on all subjects and could have started a company but didn't because he was focused on, on his marks? What is your preference? How should kids go through the core curriculum? And then what are you going to do for enrichment? One of the core questions there is, are you doing enrichment based on content? You know, you need, they can do all these subject matters, or are you doing it based on skills? Kids who have more talent should learn these additional skills, higher order thinking skills, creativity, problem solving, stuff like that. What is your focus? Then what are you going to do in the classroom? Because you need classroom management systems to be able to differentiate between maybe the not so bright students and the really bright students. And what are you going to do outside your classroom? How are you going to make sure you target everybody? One thing that's really important is ownership. And I see this time and time again in so many schools that the ownership isn't defined. And what 9 out of 10 times happens is one or two people, probably you, is really passionate about gifted education. But it's all with you. And when you go to a different school, there's no gifted and talent policy left anymore. You need to have the ownership throughout the school. And the principal needs to support you. The team needs to support you because otherwise nothing's going to happen. Communication is key. Talk about expectations with parents, with other teachers, with the kids. Because there are a lot of high expectations and there are a lot of demands from parents in the gifted sphere. 
So talk about them, communicate with them. This is what we can do, this is what we can't do. And this is the way we're gonna help, help you. And have a process for adjusting. You know, I was guiding the school the other day and we'd spend, you know, a few months and we set up the entire, you know, policy letter and we drafted up all the papers with missions and vision and stuff like that. And they're like, ah, cool, the document is done. So now our committee can be canceled because we don't need it anymore. I'm like, well, we've got a different idea of what we're going to do because you need to come together at least for another two years because the fact that it's on paper doesn't mean that it's done in the classroom. You really need to bridge the two together. Always make sure that it's implemented, that it's done. And that needs adjusting after six months. Evaluate, how is it going? You know, visit the classroom, see if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And from that, adjust and create a better plan. So if you do all these things, answer all these questions, then you're way ahead of the pack. And by the way, this is not a theoretical model. This is based on practice. I can explain to you for each of these nine areas, I can show you a school that got messed up because they didn't have this sorted out properly. Okay? So do all this stuff. Make sure you got it all set up and then you can really start helping the students in your school bring out the best in yourself and in each other.